the idea that my child's going to fall behind. We need to let go of that one because just like he gave them different interests and bents, he gave them different timelines of of learning and, and developing. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am back today with Kelly Crawford and we're talking about homeschooling and about lots of fun homeschooling things and how to just relieve some of the stress that many of you are feeling. I know we have so many new homeschool moms who are listening and you're just trying to figure it out. You're wondering what this homeschool thing is supposed to look like. And as you're preparing for the next school year, which you don't even have to prepare right now. Don't feel like you have to. I'm not putting pressure on you to do that. That's something you can do, you know, through the middle of summer, even towards the end of summer, just enjoy your kids. Don't, don't put so much stress on yourself to do that. But if you are, and as you're thinking about the next school year, or maybe it's your first school year, don't put so much pressure on yourself to do all of the things. And so that's what we're talking about this week with Kelly. She was a high school English teacher. So she was in the classroom. And so she's been on both ends of it. And I love talking to former teachers, classroom teachers specifically, because you really do have a different perspective on what it looks like to have been in the classroom and what it looks like now to be at home with your kids. And so um, I love that Kelly is here sharing with us this week. So we're going to talk more about that. But before we do, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool. Every child has a unique learning style. BJU Press has video lessons with engaging teachers to lead your children through each of their academic subjects. These experienced teachers will present lesson content from multiple angles so your children can absorb information at a comfortable pace. Visit their website at bjupresshomeschool.com to see what classes are available for your students. That's bjupresshomeschool.com. Well, Kelly, welcome back to the podcast. Um, This has been a fun conversation this week, and you are so encouraging. Um, We kind of um, ended yesterday's episode talking about college, and I love the story that you told about your husband having gone, and it it just wasn't for him. And college is for some people, it really is, but it's just not for everybody. And, and I think more people are starting to recognize that college really is overrated for many people. Talk a little bit about that um, and, and what that looks like for a lot of, I mean, you've got, you've graduated. How many did you say you've graduated already? This year will be five. Okay. Maybe we're going into our senior year. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about even with your own experience and with your family, what, what the whole college route has looked like. Well, um, like you said, I think more and more people are realizing that college is one route of many yeah. routes. And, you know, especially now, again, back when, when college was first established, there were not a lot of options for um higher education. So even outside of physically going to college there with the technology we have now and all of the different um, amazing, you know, internet and whatever, there are so many ways to get a higher education or to further continue as you grow as an adult. However, as far as college goes, I just personally think it should be reserved for those few careers where it is necessary. Um, You know, I think a lot of kids think they need to go just for the experience, but we all know that that's not um, always a great experience. Another issue is if you're a Christian, especially, is um, they've become such a, such institutions of indoctrination. There is strong agendas. And so I would encourage parents, we, we don't encourage our kids to go. We keep it as an option if they absolutely need to go. Um, you know, there are so many other things, to ways to pursue careers. If if they don't have a specific reason, it saves time, it saves money to just explore any some of these other options. The vocations, like I mentioned earlier, we need to start putting a greater emphasis on that. Um, I'm a huge fan of teaching entrepreneurship to your kids, and, and that can be something easily pursued without any college education. Uh, there are just so many options that I hate to see parents become because they, if if you are of the idea that your children need to go to college, they have to go to college. That's what that's what students do. Then that is going to paralyze your um, thinking. It's going to cause unneeded amounts of stress, and mm-hmm. so I think we need to really reevaluate your idea if you have that um, if you've held that belief. Right. Yeah. And you're ta- are you talking about for the parent, it puts so much stress on the parent to have to educate their kids academically in a certain way if they're preparing them for college? 
Right. So they have to jump through all the hoops. They have to cross right. all the T's and dot their I. You know, right. there's just all this pressure. I've had parents say to me, you know, we would love to go the relaxed route, but I'm scared because if we don't do A, B, and C, then maybe they need college and can't get in. But again, when I used the example earlier, I had a daughter that we did not use the really strict formal curriculum and she has done fine. She's done great. And um, it's, it's almost, you know, when I say trust the process, I trusted mm -hmm. the process, not really knowing and it turned out to be fine and great. Yeah. So um, yeah. I'd say, you know, listen to other examples or consider that other people have, you know, been able to, to go on without the formal rigid curriculum and still do great. Right. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And, and again, I mean, it's, it's for some, it's just not for all. And mm -hmm. thinking has definitely, I think, shifted. Um, it, college is so expensive today so expensive that, uh, you know, these kids, we actually, uh, just recently we had Christina Ellis from, um, Ram, uh, the Ramsey Institute come on our podcast and she talked about the dangers of, you know, taking out student loans and things like that. And these kids are coming out of college with so much debt that they've wow. got these degrees that they can't even pay off. And so, you know, you, you talked about Ramsey earlier and, uh, Ramsey's doing a great job of teaching kids. They actually have a, a video. I think I'm pretty sure we probably linked this in that episode. We'll put a link to it, um, in this episode as well, but there's a free video on YouTube. It was actually produced by Dave Ramsey called, um, borrowed future. That's what it's mm -hmm. called. And it's excellent. And it talks about the dangers of taking out student loans and stuff. Mm. So yeah, I think it's just something that we need to be aware of. And, you know, if your child is college bound, I think we need to encourage them in that and prepare them for that. But we just need to know, like, how did God prepare your kids? And in first grade, we don't have to put so much pressure on ourselves to think, okay, we have to be preparing this kid for college or else their whole life is going to be ruined. <laughs> right. So. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and IEW. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are back with Kelly. Um, we talked before the break, we were talking about college and, and you know, just trying to get our kids there. If that's the path that they're supposed to take, if it's not the path that they're supposed to take, helping our kids to determine what the Lord has for them and what, what road they're supposed to take. And it's funny because when you think about that, like if you, I, I don't know, when I think about my life, when I got out of high school, I had no idea what I was going to do. All I knew was that I wanted to get married, but I didn't know other than that, anything else. And now, you know, all these years later, doing a podcast and Schoolhouse Rocked Ministry. And I, I would never, ever have been able to prepare for this. I mean, the internet barely even existed <laughs> when, right. when I got out of high school. Um, it was so funny when I look back and I think about all the TV commercials and everything was, you know, www.pepsi.com. You know, it was like <laughs> the big thing, like all the www. Um, and it's just so funny. They don't even put that on, on commercials anymore, I don't think because everybody just knows. But back then right. it was a big thing, but I had no idea what I was going to do at that point. And it's neat to just see how the Lord leads us through our adult life. And we just do our best to follow him. Um, right. So we talked about that. As we're preparing our kids for life as adults, it can be scary. And I think that parents often fear a lot of things, whether we have a first grader or if we have, you know, a senior like I have now, um, going into high school uh, or going into her senior year of high school. What do you think as you've talked to homeschool parents, um, you know, you've been on the speaking circuit, you've written a lot on homeschooling. What do you think homeschooling parents fear the most? What, what causes the most stress for them in their homeschool journey? It's either having a child fall behind and they have this mm. idea. And that's another idea that we need to kind of um, undo. Another thought right. that we've been taught that this school system, everybody's in the same grade. Everybody uh, is measured, you know, with tests. And so the idea that my child's going to fall behind, we need right. to let go of that one. Because just like he gave them different interests and bents, he gave them different levels of or different timelines of, of learning yeah. and, and developing. And so one child is going to read it at four or five years old, and he's eager to do that. I've had children start reading as late as eight or nine years old, and, and it takes a little while for them to, you know, and so by, by the public school standard, they would be behind. But we have the luxury of being homeschooled to let them learn at their own pace. 
and then it's it's it doesn't cause as much anxiety as you're trying to teach when you're trying to teach every child the same thing at the same age you're going to have some kids that just aren't ready for that yeah. and so they we fear that we fear what family and friends are saying or going to say or have said um, we have a lot of pressure there's only so much you can do about that um, we have to learn just to be brave and courageous and confident in the choices that we're making and the path that we're taking and as much as we can help educate them about those things you know you know i know what i know what i'm doing i have uh you know this idea or this belief and we trust that this is what god has for our child um but i think just the fear of not measuring up to everybody else's standards and, and your child not measuring up to everybody's child we've got to remember that we are so all uniquely different and trust that and be okay with that. Well, thank you for that encouragement. I know that you've written a couple of books um, that I think bring some of that same encouragement. Share with us what your books are and uh, what other resources you have to help equip and encourage homeschool families. Sure. So I wrote Think Outside the Classroom. It's a practical approach to relaxed homeschooling. Um, and it basically, it's a, it's a small booklet. It's very easy to read, but it's packed full of not only just the general philosophy behind um, relaxed homeschooling, which I've shared some in these podcasts, but also some real practical things that parents can do. Like, what does it look like flesh out? What does relaxed homeschooling, you know, how does that differ from what I may be used to doing in my uh, standard process of the classroom model? And so um, I've had a lot of good feedback from parents that just taught, told me that it just relieves so much stress once they um, read that book and, and, started on that journey. So I would encourage you if you're considering, if you, if you are stressed about homeschooling, and honestly, it, it's helpful for anybody in any stage of homeschooling that you're in just to um, kind of rethink the process of education. And yeah. and then there's another, I have a devotional for mothers called When Motherhood Feels Too Hard, and also have gotten so much good feedback from moms who just really have been encouraged by that book. I wrote that book when motherhood felt too hard. So uh -huh. I was just in a really raw and difficult season. We had just lost everything to a horrific tornado that just took, oh. um, just destroyed our whole neighborhood and we were homeless practically. We had a place to live, but it was a teeny tiny little cabin. Yeah, just dealing with a lot of um, difficult things. It was three weeks postpartum. So that book oh, wow. is a real, it really came from a, a deep raw place that, um, but the Lord just used all the circumstances to bring me closer to him. And I was happy to share through, uh, with that book, through that book with other moms who may be feeling like they're in the trenches. So there yeah. are several other resources there on the website. If you want to visit, there's a scripture song CD. So, um, I would encourage people to just browse around. Okay. And the website again is generationcedar.com. Sounds great. We will link that in the show notes. Kelly, thank you so much for coming on with us this week. It has been such an encouragement and um, I've loved this conversation. I know that it's going to be an encouragement to so many who are, you know what, like you said, whether they're just now starting their homeschool journey or many, many years into it, it's been an encouragement to me as well. And I'm, I'm years into it. <laughs> so oh, I, thank I, you. I appreciate you for asking me. It was a real honor to get to meet and talk with you. Thank you so much. And you guys, thank you so much for listening this week. It is always so fun to know that you're on the other side of this mic. If you would like us to be praying for you about anything specifically, please always feel free to send us an email at podcast at schoolhouserocked.com. We would love to know how we can encourage you and pray for you. And also, if the Lord puts it on your heart to help support the ministry of Schoolhouse Rocked, you can do that through our website as well, schoolhouserocked.com. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you back here next week. Bye. A mom said to me one time, aren't you worried about sheltering your children? And I said to her, we care more about sheltering tomato plants in the culture right now than we do about our precious children. And so if someone wants to accuse me of sheltering my children, my answer is always absolutely yes. I will shelter my child until I know my child can stand up against the elements of the culture so that they can grow to maturity. And we slowly begin to remove the shelter from around them as we see that they are mature and that they understand the battle lines around them and can engage the culture from a position of strength rather than weakness.